Hi Ali, um, thanks for joining me today. Um, we're just going to have, a, have a, just, just an informal chat really about um, what your views are, what you're doing um, within your own business, what you're advising your current clients, etc. Um, and if there's any sort of help and support or guidance that you could give to, um, to, to the dealers or people that are listening uh, to, to this uh, broadcast or conversation. Yeah. All right, so um, let's kick let's kick start just by um, learning a little bit more about you and what um, Sentience Automotive do um, as a whole. Okay, yeah. Hi. Well, morning. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, try and add a bit. Try and add a bit of value uh, if I can. Um, yeah, Sentience. You know, some might know this, but yeah, Sentience Automotive Solutions. We're a, Almost consultancy, a small one, um, and we work with dealers and uh, the automotive industry as a whole, uh, in all shapes and sizes, really, on improving their performance. Okay. Um, snazz it up, however you like, you know, you yeah. can those words. But fundamentally, it's about taking what a client already has and improving it. So whether that's selling more cars, spending less, making more, growing, whatever. Um, you know, each case is individual, but yeah, we've got some fab clients. We work with probably about 70 80 percent of our clients are dealers, so they would be um, franchise, non franchise, independent, small group, um, and uh, the other sort of 20 30 percent will be supply chain, so you know, motor finance and uh, motor insurers, motor warranties, uh, those types of things. So, um, yeah, that's what we do, we love it. Perfect. One of the one of the things that I saw on your website that was quite I I I, I really liked was the no no jargon or the jargon buster. Sit, um, I can't remember the exact wording, um, yeah. but it's it, it was it was refreshing. I got criticised for that, you know. Did you? Several years ago, yeah. Somebody advised me that that would alienate um, several people. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, good. Hopefully, it'll alienate all the sort of bullshitty people that you come into contact yeah. with. You know, yeah. I like I like alienating them, so <laughs> I thought I'd leave it on um, yeah. because it is it's about being transparent. You know, I'm not saying we've got all the answers, not saying we're perfect, but we, we love what we do. We've yeah, got a great client base, and and um, it's about just being understood. You know, can we actually add the value to the client, and do they understand what we're going on about, and can we measure it? Yeah, so that we can demonstrate it's worked. You know. Yeah. And, and and to do that, yeah, I think we need to sort of wind the next and on the, the jargon a little bit. Yeah, you need, like I say, it's refreshing, isn't it? Yeah, Cause a bit here and there. But. The, the industry gets a hard time. Um, the, the sales, a car salesman, um, you know, gets a hard time. And obviously, it's fr it was frustrating for me because... it was You'll get found out very quickly if you start lying to people. Um, and... It was frustrating that the, that that was the that was the perception that that the industry had. Um, so it's I, when I just when I read it and I thought that that's for me. I thought that was great because obviously it, it relates as well. It relates to change, Paul. Not much has changed. I mean, I started selling my first job selling cars for a little Vauxhall dealer um, and working my way through. I've always been in the automotive industry my whole career. I don't want to call it a career, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, yeah, I sold cars and worked my way through to running variety of business, blah, blah, blah. Point is, is that um, the, uh, the the industry gets a bad name, rightfully so most of the time. It's been yeah. to that sounds. Um, there are some absolute superstars, but even when I started selling cars, uh, 1990, October 96, I started, um, just after Euro 96, you know, it's calm, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that was a fabulous summer, that was. Uh, oh yeah it's a wonder why anybody employed me after that to be honest with you <laughs> it was a heavy summer i know that <laughs> still uh, recovering uh, three months later <laughs> you know, but uh but anyhow yeah start selling cars and 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 you know I quickly did did all right out of it um you know sold plenty and really lo I loved it loved it best job I ever had to be truthful um and it, it occurred to me that i just thought well why am i any good at this so I haven't got any discernible talent. You know, I'm not a pianist. I'm not, you know, I'm not a, an expert footballer, golfer. You know, I don't have any discernible talent. 
Yeah. So, so um, just thought I'd just just do it really well. So, if, so if a customer phoned me up, you know what? I'd, I'd ring him back when I said I would. Yeah. And and if they asked me a question and I knew the answer, I'd tell them. And if I didn't know the answer, I'd ask somebody that did, and then tell them. Yeah. Right? yeah. If I said that the car would be ready for three o'clock on Thursday, at half two on Thursday, I'd make sure it was ready for three, you know, and all clean. And they took yeah. delivery and it was, did I put the mats in it that I promised? Or did I say I'd fill it up with fuel? And if I did, has it got it in? And yeah. all the rest of it. So it turns out that just by doing that, people yeah. sort of bought cars and I had lots of repeat customers. And so when I, when I was, promoted probably prematurely really and the business was it was out of desperation i would think I was <laughs> 22 or 23 as a sales manager and and I, and, I, and I remember one of the first sales meetings i had with I, I had three and a half of trainee sales execs and i said look guys i've got the answers but if you do what you say you're going to do when yeah. you said you're going to do it yeah you'll be all right i think and everyone yeah. was really insightful i said well <laughs> don't, don't mess people about you know, be straightforward, give them great service, look after them, love them to bits, and you you probably sell quite a few cars, and yeah. you've just got to be better than the dealer down the road. Yeah. Because, and that's where I found the industry, some gets it right, because if, if you were to, well, not now, obviously, but if you were to call 10 dealers, we do this regularly when we're, when we're working with one of our clients, we like to know what they're up against locally. Yeah, yeah. Because you haven't got to be the best in the universe, you've just got to be better than everybody else, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, locally. So, absolutely. So if, say, for example, this is your kind of core demographic and you've got, I don't know, say, 10 arguments, say, dealers that you would consider to be the alternative to yours for a purchase, yeah. is how good are they? Yeah. Because if they're better than you online with inquiry management, with the way they treat customers, with the way they present their deal, with the way they close their deal, with the way they look after the whole customer, if they're better than you at it, then you're... You're, the, yeah. you're, you're at an immediate disadvantage. It doesn't matter how much money you chuck at, I don't know, whatever you want to chuck it at, you're at an immediate disadvantage. So when yeah. we actually do a little bit of mystery shopping, if you want to call it that, and, and evaluate what they're up against so they can improve is, is most of the time you send a dealer an email, you might as well have thrown a paper airplane out the window. <laughs> well, it might, might, yeah. So a lot, yeah. not all, not all, definitely yeah. not. There's some absolutely uh, uh, you know, wonderful businesses out there. Um, but... Yeah, overall, it's, it's, it's inability to, to treat people well and understand what the modern customer wants from the customer experience as opposed to what you as a dealer want. I think that's yeah. Well, there's always that direct conflict, isn't it? De the dealer wants the best, most profit and the, and the customer wants the best deal, which they don't go hand in hand, do they? And it's, it's trying to weigh up, um, weigh up the, you know, so, so everyone's happy. But yeah. uh, interestingly, you sort of said that about, you know, you, you, you've done, done well in, in the sales level. And, you know, that was the thing that I found that. You know, I say that though, because everybody says, I remember when, when, when we worked with, or Melanie who works with us particularly does a lot of work with sales executives, but you know, nobody ever says they're really good at what they do. Yeah. Because they don't want to be called a big head. Yeah. Or whatever. But, but Maybe. if you are as a salesperson, what, it, it, it's good to feel like you're competing. You ask Ronaldo if he thinks he's a good footballer. What do you reckon he'll tell you? They're the best in the world. See what I mean? Yeah. You, know, you, don't, you don't believe it or you don't, you don't, if you ask any player um, or anybody that considers themselves professional, I love it when car salespeople, sales managers, dealer principals, they say to me, I'm good at what I do. I'm not the best I could be, but I'm bloody good at what I do. Yeah. I think that's the mindset we need a bit more of instead of being apologetic for being yeah. good at now, if you're yeah. good at cars, why? Because you can then it's, share it's, that, can't you? I think I think you've hit the nail. It's so simple. Car sales is simple as long as you've not, as long as you're able to. Um, I think if if you failed miserably with women in your younger years, you, you'll turn out to be a good car salesman because you can face rejection really well, <laughs> uh, and you don't let it don't let it sit on sit on your shoulders for too long. I think, like I say, oh. as, as long as you. As long as you do what you say, so you know, from that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, simple things, as you've said, call someone back at this time you said it, not half an hour, ten minutes later. Reply to an email that you said you'd reply to. Has has the safeguard been applied to it, and is the bag in the boot? Are there mats in it? Did you say you'd stick 30, 40 quids of juice in it? Those sorts of things, 
And they're the things, because obviously we get, we, car salesmen get very blasé about the handover. In fact, it's probably the worst part of the job, right? So they get very blasé about it and they want it over as quickly as possible. Some businesses, some businesses in their infinite wisdom are now employing handover specialists. I, I mean, I, I'm talking as a generic. I've never heard of anything more stupid than, than employing somebody, you know, a handover specialist. So once I've taken your money, sold you the car and some add-ons, I no longer care. Um, here's someone else that's going to show you where the indicators are. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely madness. It's, yeah. it's you know, we, we are neutering the process. But that, that kind of, well, not the process, the individual. But, but coming back a step um, to, you know, dealerships that want to perform a, a little bit better, maybe. Now, and obviously there's all sorts of mayhem going on at the moment. And, you know, the current context we have to consider, of course. Um, you know, we're coming on to that shortly, I've no doubt. But, but the, the, the general essence is inquiry management, and I bang on about it all the time, is the cornerstone, the most fundamentally important component of any sales business, okay? The sales department is the most important, yeah. right? Yeah. Without any doubt. So you're not gonna convince me otherwise. I'm not saying the others aren't important and they don't re generate revenue, because they do. Yeah. But the most important is the sales department. Mm -hmm. If there's no rubber on the road, okay, there's nothing to fix. Yeah, there's nothing to service, there's no, there's right? no admin to do. So, so we gotta sell the cars, okay? To do that, we need customers. Yeah. So it's about so it's about generating inquiries, so lead generation in the modern context. Yeah. Digital, social media, where you still have a some some dealers still have an advert in the local newspaper. If it works from it works from. Not here to say which is good and bad. What I'm saying is, is you generate leads, and then handle the leads. Yeah. Which then results in a sale. But never mind all that. Because if you don't generate leads in the first instance, you're not going to sell anything. Mm -hmm. And if you then don't handle the inquiry properly as, 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 as step two, you're not going to sell anything. Yeah. So you, how, how as a business now do we evolve? Or do we need to evolve? And, and I would say uh, now, certainly the work we're doing with, with our clients is we're, we're probably, we knew this time would come. Everybody did. Yeah. It's the way in which it's happened and the speed at which it's happened has yeah. Uh, uh, you know, has, has caught everybody out. But you know, more important than that, of course, is that you know the reasons for it happening are are I don't know what the right word to use is horrific. Yeah. Uh, from a from a humane level. Mm -hmm. uh, never mind the economy. I mean, yes, it's going to take a long time to recover and all the rest of it. And there's lots of speculation. But there's people who are losing parents. I mean, so far I haven't. Uh, yeah, yeah. During this, there's people that use losing loved ones. You know, so this. this Sort of with it's bittersweet how, how this has all happened. Um, but we'll get through it mm -hmm. um, as yep. a people, as we always do. Um, uh, I think, you know, we'll, we've got to be positive um, in the face of adversity. Uh, positive, you know, keeping a positive mindset, thinking about what's important to us. And then when we do return to our... Uh, businesses, I'm talking about dealerships particularly here, is in an article I was asked to write recently, they made reference to day one. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what are we thinking about with our, our day one? Because we, you know, my advice is that you've got to think about, if you're not already, is those two components, is how am I going to generate leads? Mm -hmm. And then how am I going to handle those leads? Yeah. Because, because you can spend a fortune on marketing, mm -hmm. have a thousand leads come in from social media, and you get back to 20% of them. Yeah, yeah. So you might as well not spend the money, might you? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, is, that is true. Like I say, you, you know, it's all well and good, like, as you say, generating them, which is obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a crucial crucial thing to have but it's it's split in two isn't it it's, it's all well and good generating them but if you're not going to handle them contact them or handle them correctly more importantly um you may as well not have them there at all sales management now has it's always been in my view uh one of the most important um roles uh functions in in an automotive business 
the sales man uh, management because they control so much more than people believe. I think they control it, as you know, from selling cars, Paul, but the, the tempo of the sales department, mm. sales manager, up, yeah. down, motivation levels, tasks, activity, focus yeah. area, profitability, list goes on. Mm. So important. A great sales manager can make or break a business. Um, yeah. So a lot of our work in, in certain businesses would be around sales management because I think an underperforming sales team will 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 perform better with better sales management. Yeah, uh, if you go into if you go into a successful business, the, the chances are that the sales manager is positive, upbeat, absolutely good. And there'll be there'll be advocates of the business as well, inside and outside of work. Yeah. They'll be advocates of the business. They will be people who believe that what they do matters. Yeah. You know? But yeah. but also on a level that, that transcends selling cars. Mm -hmm. It matters because you're responsible for a collective of people, whoever that might be, one or two salespeople, ten people, whatever, and their livelihoods. Yeah. And the way that they feel when they walk into a business and leave it of a daytime. Yeah. And and I think that that as we pass through this difficult time and return to whatever normal will be, whatever normal will look like. And yeah. I've got, got a crystal ball. But when we return to some form of normality, that individual sir, is going to have a big job on their hands because they might have a group of people that have been furloughed who they've got to you know, re-energize, have yeah. been keeping match fit for a month or two or three or whatever. Yeah. Maybe some don't want to come back to work. Maybe they've lost good people. I don't know. Maybe some others have found different jobs. You know, is it going to be the same business that you left? Probably not. Yeah. Um, that individual's then going to have to make sure that they sweat every single lead. You know, the customer experience now has always been important. People bang on about customer service, and most of the time, it is rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Most businesses today, the people businesses are rubbish. Yeah. Right? Because where are people? Are you really? You know, now is the time that we show up on them, isn't it? Now is the time that businesses show up about are they people business? This yeah. is the time. When, when, um, when people come back in, how are we getting them going again? You know, what is the sale? What was a great, an old um, boss of mine I, I met with, um, oh, when was it? It was the beginning of March. So oh, it seems like a lifetime ago now. But, but we met, we were talking about a few uh, bits and pieces. Anyway, he said, what does world class look like in a sales process now? And I thought it was a really good question because that was, that was one of my questions. You beat me to it. <laughs> Is it? Go on, then. I'll do it. We'll just oh, okay. uh, Ali, what, what, does, uh, what does world class look like in a sales oh, process? Why did you ask that, Paul? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, a world class sales process looks like the sort of process that leaves the customer infused about it. Hmm? Okay. Simple as that. So, so one customer that could look like, I've seen this car for sale on your website. I really like it. I want to buy it. You know, that kind of an approach, that transact approach. Yeah. Right. Okay, sure. Well, give us your credit card details and this finance application. I'll deliver it to you on Saturday. To that customer, that's a world-class sales process because yeah. they saw what they wanted. They wanted to buy it. The salesperson listened. The sales manager mobilized his team, her team, got the inquiry managed, put through their, you know, the system made sure that it was completely compliant, got the car delivered, paid out, done. Customers enthusiastic, happy, host that he loves you. Yeah. Right? Or is it somebody at the start of their buying journey who's just researching and statistically, depending on where you, you, you look, you know, they say between 12 and 16 hours. I'm sure you guys have got your own um, data on that. But yeah. somewhere around there is, is how many hours are spent researching a vehicle before they make that initial uh, dealer contact. Mm -hmm. So, but is that person just looking for a car for their daughter? Are they looking for a bigger car because they've just had another child? Are they looking for a smaller car because they're downsizing? Who knows? But they're at a different stage to the person that just wants to buy. Yeah. So having a toolkit to someone to communicate digitally, do they only want a live chat? Do they only want a direct message? Do they want to communicate by WhatsApp? Do they want everything done on email? Do they want to come in and visit you? Do they want to phone you? Do they want to email you? 
you know, the, the, the list of, of methods for dealers, uh, sorry, customers to get in touch with the sales function is huge. You're about to get wider. Yeah. So, so a world-class sales process looks like a business that is consistent with its approach to all levels of inquiry. They don't think one is a good lead and one is a shit lead. They don't think one is worth more than the other. Yeah. yeah. They have a consistent approach to inquiry management. How many people have we seen this week? How many test drives have we completed? How many cars have we sold? Where have they come from? Where have these leads come from? Mm -hmm. You know, where, where is the big ticket item sold? What's the feedback been from the customers that bought from these streams? Yeah. You know, are, are we getting better feedback from social media customers or worse feedback from them than we are walk-ins? Because that will tell a story to the sales management, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, but we love them when they walk in and we just can't be bothered when they, when they message the mentality is not right. Absolutely. That could be that's their preferred method of communication. I mean, I've got some people, I still like ringing people up. I'm old school. So if I want to organise, you know, I'm an Arsenal fan. So um, the season to get older at Arsenal. So, you know, one of my pursuits when I'm not working and looking after the kids and all the other things I have to do is um, going to the football with my friends and having a couple of beers and watching Arsenal be useless. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, I like to ring them up and say, oh yeah, um, what time are we meeting? 12 o'clock, Ali, in the so-and-so. Lovely. I'll be there. Might bring the eldest boy with me. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um, some people would never dream of that. They'd, they'd, they'd create a WhatsApp group. They would send a text. They would send a Facebook message. See what I mean? Yeah. I've got friends yeah. that will, will send me a what They would rather, they send me a WhatsApp voice note. <laughs> rather than phone. <laughs> but, but that doesn't mean it's wrong, does yeah, it? no. Yeah. So, so it's about those, those styles. So world-class sales process, I think, is about having a sales department. You know, we coach and work with sales teams when, uh, extensively about this. This is something I would tend to do because I love it. Um, and, and it's about saying, right, how do we gear this business up to sweat every single part of it, every yeah. single within this business, every lead? And it goes back to what I said is, is I will always point at two things. You've got lead generation and inquiry management in the middle you've got people yeah don't you that yeah. can make it or break it and that's the bit we like to focus on get this bit right lead generation get the people heads right around it that and fixes. that's the, the lowest highest stock turn higher profitability more yeah. add-on higher finance penetration virtually no overage stock to, to a minimum yeah. less of less if not you know, much less of a, a, a uh, pre-reg exposure because you already knew what your numbers were. So you already knew yeah. how to break that target down into yeah, individual yeah. activity-based targets. Um, how to sell through stock quickly that you know is going to be a problem. If you already know, if you know it on day seven, you shouldn't still be looking at it at day 60. No, no. I knew that would happen. Gone. You know what? You know you're stealing a living, aren't you? You know you need yeah. to get into it, and and that is what world class look like looks like for me. It's being agile and making sure that you're completely aware of all the ways in which you can sell, not yeah. just do, telephone walking. Do you think? Um, you sort of touched on this earlier about being forced into a change. Um, do you think that? the sales process i mean you go back as far as, as you can remember the sales process has been exactly the same there's seven or eight core steps some groups on dealers like to bulk it up a little bit um but those seven or eight key steps are still in there do you think that sales process is gonna change when we get back to work and do you think it will be more do you think there'll be a lot more done digitally than there was before in into yeah okay so difficult question um obviously because it's future based yeah um i like to deal in the present um, right okay um i mean i'll have a go at the question but hypothetically the thing, speaking yeah the thing with the, the thing with the past is that it can be used you know if you advance thing thing about the future is, is it helps people that are crap at the present sell a dream um, yeah well yeah 
You know, and as we said earlier, just before we started, was that everyone's an expert until they're asked to do something, aren't they? Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You say you're selling cars, go and sell me a car. Like. Go and sell me a car. You know, could you? Could I? You know, a lot of sales training is, is this is how you do it. Right. Go in the show and show me. Yeah. Um, so taking that into account, I just want to be careful what I say because I'm a big, a big advocate of doing the doing. But I think what it will do is it will force dealers to take their digital offering more seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this enforced period away from the business has probably been good from that perspective for them. Yeah. Um, from a customer buying habit, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think a lot will change. I think that it's a convenient narrative at the moment. Yeah. I don't think much will change. I think the confidence to buy online, you know, big ticket items like cars, um, will probably arrive sooner than it would have done. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Because it's always going to arrive. It's always been arriving, and, and yeah. just I'm just saying that the adoption of such will be it will be here sooner. Yeah. Um, but, but much like holidays, you know, there's still travel agents on the high street yeah. and there's still, you know, that you try and, you know, I live in Norwich and you go into the, uh, well, there's plenty in the, well, you know, certain ones and independent ones and independent travel, they're all there. And mm-hmm. if you try and go in there on a lot of days, they will be busy. There will be people in there booking holidays, cruises, whatever. Yeah. Um, just like there's lots of people online just booking their holiday. Yeah. Because that's been the norm for so long. People, you know, the norm for next day delivery, Amazon parcels, clothes. Um, you know, you look at the, you look at the way in which um, food, you know, ho- home delivery took. You know, everyone was so skeptical. Why would I, they're going to get all the shit fruit and veg? I'm going to get all the mouldy. You know, that was the mindset, yeah. wasn't it? I'm just they're just going to pick all the crap stuff for me. And you know, you got to go in store. You want the fruit and veg, all right? For tins, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But now look. I mean, up and down my road, you can't you can't move for um, Ocado. Uh, I don't think, you know. but um, you know, <laughs> uh, I just, we, we use that. little. <laughs> you can edit that bit out. Oh, um, okay. I, to be honest with you, an apple's an apple, as far as I'm concerned. It just depends what sort of idiot's willing to pay four quid for it. Or for <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I don't ever buy into an apple and go, "Oh, it appears to be a you know <laughs> three pound fifty. <laughs> just eat the apple and shut up, and move on. So, um, so, uh, so, so the, 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 the thing is, I think that if you look at that model uh, in terms of fresh fruit, fresh produce, and how that has now been well adopted, yeah. If you look at um, you know holidays that you can't actually physically see, yeah, you can't reject a holiday. You know, once you've been on it and it was not to your liking, that's tough, isn't it? Yeah. There's consumer credit rights around consumer rights around cars there yeah. are there are for holidays and, yeah. and you can return a t-shirt if you're off or wherever you order it off you know much like cars so what i'm saying is is this sort of click add to basket check out yeah pretty normal you've got a dog what's your dog's name? oh sorry it's a miniature poodle is it it's loud for a miniature poodle yeah sure he's, <laughs> he's, hey are you sure a big dog hasn't jumped into your garden eating your little dog is now yeah. That could well be the case. He is an absolute wimp as well. I apologise. Um, Sorry about it. It's normal life. We're all at home. Well, that's um, true. That's true. So, so um, yeah, just waiting for one of my kids to come running through the front door in a minute and saying, Daddy, can we eat some more Easter egg? I've, uh, had, a, I've had a text from the wife saying, are you done yet? Because she's got to come back in with littlers. <laughs> well, you, put, you put them outside. That's harsh. They're um, cutting the grass. They're cutting the grass. So, so, um, so yeah, to go, so, so I think that what will happen is... There's, there'll be more confidence around buying online. Customers will be more expected for click and deliver, click and collect. Um, and, uh, you know, but, but I don't think much will change. It will just, what will need to change to truly understand whether it has moved too much is the dealer's capabilities, website capability. Can they take an order online? Can they take a finance prop online? Can they take a deposit online? Do they offer nationwide delivery? Do they offer, you know, click and collect sort of facilities. Yeah. The things that are commensurate with food or buying a t-shirt or a pair of trainers. You know, I think there's a general consistency to consumer behavior now, sort of homogenizing it a little bit, but we're still out of kilter with cars. You know yeah. what I mean? 
Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's taken, taken longer for cars. I mean... And there's a lot of reasons for that, you know, around the emotive nature of the purchase and the size and scale of the purchase and the complexities around funding it. I understand that there are more variables to that, but I think this, 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 this current situation will just, you know, push the help. Market. So you, you think it will help push the customer more than the dealer? Because, I mean, once the customer yeah. adapts, the dealer has to, oh, the dealer has to adapt. Yeah, you yeah, think it yes, push the customer, not not necessarily push the customer, but well, people are bored, aren't they? You know, it, it gives you. It, there's probably a bit more confidence in it. You look at the the, the dealers that, the, sorry, the businesses that are launching launched of the last twelve months, eighteen months. You know, on the online offering, we can sit here and rattle the names off. Some of them have, you know, got thousands of cars in stock for, you know, no dealership. So that that model, but then that model existed when I was selling cars because Jam Jar cars were around, Tesco yeah. cars came around. So, yeah. Not saying they'll fail, but I'm saying it, it's not new. No, but the, the, it's not new, but the time is new. Correct. Again, obviously, you, you, you know, I don't know, I don't know how long ago you were selling cars, and I'm not going to put a time frame on it because I don't want to insult you. Well, I'm but... 21. Okay, so uh, started your working life at 16. So four years, five years. I'm 19, and it was 1996. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, a few years ago. Um, you know, the, the things like social media, um, you know, I know the internet was around, but, you know, it's much more embedded and ingrained and it's, it's habit now for, for people to sit at home and go either, oh, I fancy having a, I fancy a new car or, oh, what's, what's new? Mm. Um, or, ah, I've just had a, a whopping great big bill for my car. I can't afford or I, don't, or I don't want to spend that sort of money on that car because it's not worth it let's go and buy another one. And the first thing they do is pick up the phone or laptop. Yeah. So it, it's, it's more ingrained in people now. And, and I think, I think that's, you know, I've been, I've been talking to people and sort of been sort of going down the opposite route of, I think dealers, I, I personally believe the um, sales process will change. Um, not, not, not dramatically. You'll still have, you know, you know, you still have to do your test drives, your quotes, etc. Orientated because there'll be more, there'll be non-physical inquiries will go up, which yeah. means the the, the 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 way in which you run a sales department must incorporate, yeah, all all streams of inquiry. Now they'll all say they do, but they don't. They don't. No, no. Go back to that question. They um the the yeah, and I think I think of of the change in process as as you've rightly said, and I've kind of overlooked it. Is is will be will be forced by the customer, which technically speaking, everything everything that we do in deal at dealership level is forced by the customer. Because if the customer well, stops, you've got to get ahead of that. I mean, our clients, you know, we're working with at the moment remotely, albeit, and we get back out there. Is is you know, we're trying to stay ahead of that. Yeah, we want to exceed their expectations, not meet them. As a market, you know, a market-driven necessity. Um, yeah. The customer expects that you know. Let's be better. Like goes back to that. You know, what's the competition doing? Yeah. Um, let's be better than that. Let's make ourselves easy to do business with. My favourite saying in the world. I nicked it off somebody from years ago. I can't remember who now, but somebody far wiser than me said, "Make yourself as easy as possible to do business with." Um, yeah. And it, 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 it's absolutely right. Absolutely right. We are hard. No. The reason the, the reason it's a low return industry is we're almost impossible to buy anything off. Yeah. You know, yeah. you walk in, I walk into my local cult, want to buy a packet of peanuts, right? And they're a quid, right? Go get them, give cashier a quid, leave, sorted. Yeah. I want to buy a car for £10,000, phone up dealership, the misery starts. Yeah. 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 I th and I think we all know what that is. And that, and that sort not of reverts. Not all, because like uh, I said, no, we, we, we all know what it is. Yeah. I know, and they know who they are, and I've worked with them, and there's many that I haven't worked with, uh, or yeah. my company's worked with. Um, they are fantastic. They really are. And, and you know, we're not going to name names, but, but, you know, there are many businesses, large and small, out there that I could comfortably write a page like this that are exceptional at what they do. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they really are. And I think they, they get whipped up into it unfairly. I, I, it was a comment the other day on a post that I'd written for something or other and they said that the individual was, was sort of commenting that the issue is going to be in the used car market is there's no professionals you know out there and i just thought i don't know i mean i know you're trying to get yeah. a little bit of fame but i know some really really good used car professionals some people are really good at selling cars 
Yeah. And um, I think there's a lot to be learned there. And I think this current situation is pulling everybody together a little bit. So hopefully a bit more sort of shared expertise. Yeah, it, it, it's again sort of what we touched on at the start. It's it's about support now. I think it will make. I mean, business is tough anyway. So but what, are you, doing you, what are you doing for your clients? You know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but casting it, you know, um, and and the like. Yeah. You remember so we behave now, weren't we? Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, and that's 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 the idea. If you look at um, the companies, the use the the uh, your auto traders, gurus motors us piston heads you know we've all come out with support and that's and that's what it is i mean some of us have come out with you know one offer other of us have come out with another we've we've gone down and we've offered uh, we've automatically reduced uh, every budget by 50 percent um but because we work on a pay-per-click basis we have half their cost per click but they are going to still remain they're still going to get the same level of traffic for their original budget yeah so for half the cost they're getting the same level of traffic um and and the reason we and this actually uh, brings me on to my next point the reason we've done this is because we believe um maybe maybe slightly biasedly because obviously this is what we do but um we believe and the people that i know and have spoken to within the industry at sort of business manager sales manager salesman level um when I asked them this question, the, the answers, the conversation always goes the same way. We believe that digital marketing is even more important now, not necessarily to sell cars now, but to sell cars when it's done. So Branding. correct. It's the brand awareness and the brand recall. When people come, when people are finally allowed out of the house and they either need or want a car, cause that's where, that's where all car sales start from either need or want. Um, then, they will go, oh, I saw such and such at whatever motors. Um, he was really active and this was great. Or, oh, I've seen these guys, I've seen this car. If you're expecting your advertising spend at the moment to generate sales, then you're going to be you know, pretty disappointed. Um, yeah. You've got to view it differently. You've got to view it as you know, uh, you know, branding. Absolutely, branding and front of mind. Um, you know, there, there's arguments. Say, is there pent up buying out there? Well, I, I would say yes. I'll tell you the main reason. Um, and a colleague of mine, Paul, actually raised this point. Um, oh, probably a month ago now. I don't know, right? And it's absolutely right. Is that so many people? have had their holidays cancelled, me included, I might add. I'm not looking for any sympathy, but yeah. I am. You know, yeah. can't go because yeah. of the, the COVID-19. So we, we won't be able to touch children. You know, we can't go on holiday. Fine. There's worse things happening. No problem. Right? We've had, uh, you know, any, anybody that was at a festival, they're cancelled. Yeah. Um, anybody go to any gigs, you know, music fest, music gigs, one-off getting cancelled. Uh, yeah. Obviously, football. I'm a football fan. You know, they're not going to put sixty thousand fans in in, in, in a football, fifty thousand, thirty thousand, whatever fans in the stadium. Football's cancelled. Yeah. yeah. So all the pursuits and things that you normally would look forward to, particularly a chunky item like a holiday, is most yeah. likely been cancelled. Mm -hmm. So people need something to look forward to. People need something to excite them, or to stimulate them, or to look forward to, or to plan and plot and do yeah yeah and that leaves cars yeah if you can't travel you know and spend elsewhere it does leave a, a an assuming obviously you know budget intact is people i think people are going to be using what they might have spent or, or or whatever you know later on this year on those sorts of things and staying safer and think treat themselves to a new car or a new conservatory or something you know or i don't know maybe do their ensuite or do their kitchen out or I yeah. don't know what yeah so I think there's that, that, that from an economical perspective so you need to we need to remain relevant now for that future purchase there's also you can still take a deposit now you know if you're looking for a specific vehicle uh, I don't know a specific color or spec or age or price or whatever and that yeah. car becomes available now with a dealer you can pay a deposit 
with that dealer, you know, if they're able to take it online and all the rest of it, going back to what we said, how easy are the two business with, but you can still pay a deposit yeah. and pick it up when it's safe to do so. Yeah. So are, are we open for that type of business, that deferred business? You know, because by failing to advertise our products, creating content on social media that's engaging, r remaining relevant is, you know, you, I know I know a client of ours took nine deposits last week. Wow. Right? That, that's impressive. Okay. Nine. Regardless of what they used to do, that's impressive. Absolutely. So they took, yeah. they took nine 500 pound holding deposits. Yeah. Okay on vehicles to be delivered that they have in stock. Yeah. Okay. They've been approved on finance. So they're ready to go. Customers are happy. They've exchanged documents online and everything, all the stuff, but they cannot collect the car and complete the full pay at the finance terms until lockdown's lifted. So it's safe to go to the business and have it um, collected. They won't deliver the car. This business won't deliver to cut the car to the customer because they're closed. Yeah. And they consider that to be non-essential travel, and I would agree with them. Yeah, 100%. So they're not taking advantage of the situation. They're not able to deliver. They will not deliver it to you. Mm -hmm. But they will take the deposit, so you can have the car that you want, and they'll bring it to you in a few weeks' time when, hopefully, everything, you know, I say everything, but you're at least allowed to maybe open that business again and deliver that car. Yeah. What? They would normally sell a lot more than nine in that week, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> But it does represent about 20%, 25% of their normal run rate, yeah. right? They, they would normally do sort of 35, uh, uh, you know, 40 cars. So, so of that number, you still think the nines and tens, you think, well, hang on, I'm still doing 25% of my business. Yeah. Which I think, which I think is, um, no, probably a bit more than that, which I think is pretty good. But I mean, it's a, it's a glass half full situation, isn't it? Do you look at it and go, ah, it's only nine cars, I normally do 30. But they've not stopped spending. Ah, right. Well, so, that was my next yeah. question. I was going to say, how did they get the nine? So they're still advertising. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they've not, I mean, obviously, a lot of it has been subsidised now by businesses such as yours and the others that you mentioned. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, we, 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 we've helped them with some sort of elements of that. And... and certainly around um, Google, you know, mm -hmm. and SEO. So, because people are just looking, aren't they? So how are we making sure that we're popping up in the right places? Uh, yeah. and they're, so they're, they're, they're continuing to invest in, in staying, you know, visible, particularly around social media, creating sort of engaging content, helpful content, bit of boosting. Um, and not, they're not spending as much, but they're still spending. There's still yeah. a budget there because they recognise that if we can trade a bit now, which is under our advice for this particular dealer, um, if we can trade a bit now, then uh, you're in leaner shape, aren't you, for when hopefully when things return to some form of normal. If you do, you know what it's like. If you if you don't go for a run for ages and then yeah. think, do you know what, I'm going to go for a run, good good on you, but the point is it's you're not going to be as quick. No. You know, it, it's going to hurt more. Uh, yeah. You're going to be stiff as a board the next day. Yeah, and whilst it's a loose analogy, I, 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 I do think that those that aren't continuing to be as normal as possible in yeah. these times might find they're a bit, sort of metaphorically speaking, flabby. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. When, you know, when yeah. it comes to actually, you know, getting going again. Now, yeah. what does that getting going again look like? I honestly don't know, but I don't think it's going to be as severe. Famous last words, but then you know. The, like yeah. I said, no jargon, don't try not to sit on the fence wherever possible. Yeah, there'll be a short term, but, but sort of longer term, it's going to be tied to how the economy performs, isn't it? More so than anything else. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, everything, I'm glad you said it, because it feels like I've been banging that drum for, well, for the best part of four weeks. Um, so ultimately, your advice would be, I mean, and this is what I have advised um the people that not I not this is personally this is not um through work and um, you know the sales managers and the dealer principals that have that I know have spoken to me have come to me and asked me the question about around advertising because now of what I do um, and my advice was exactly well pretty much the same as yours you must continue to stay visible um but 
renegotiate the deals that you've got, even, you know, even if it's short, short term, um, and reduce, reduce. reduce spend. That's it. If you reduce the spend, not to zero. RMS, but that comes back to effective inquiry management. But yeah. you know, I've got some clients that don't use Auto Trader at all. Yeah. Aren't on it at all. Um, and turn their stock 10, 11 times. Yeah. I've got some that spend a terrific amount with Auto Trader and do very well. Yeah. So it's, you know, different strokes and all that. But but, but they understand where the leads are coming from, what they're costing, so they make informed decisions. At the moment, you know, it might be that you'd be better served turning down the spend on one to put it somewhere else, because if that's going to perform better for you, now's the time to play around, now's the time to, to measure and to check, because, you know, you can't just not do, you can't stop and save all that money, because the worst thing you can do in times like this is to, is to become invisible. It will cost you far more money to get visible again, because you've got to think about how search engines work, you know? You've yeah. got to think about how, how listings work. Yeah. They're not, you don't turn taps on and off in the digital world, do you? It's about no. a consistency. Yeah. So I'm not saying go and spend a fortune. What I'm saying is if you spend wisely and measure it, be brave if you can, of course. Yeah. Because well, you know, I'm sure you do, and there are many others. There are many businesses out there spending even more now on their social media footprint, even more yeah. than they were anyway. Yeah. Because they're thinking, oh, you know, we want to eat this. Yeah. Because they've got more eyeballs on their content than they've ever had. Because of course, most people are at home. Yeah. They recognize that I've never had a bigger audience. Let's get the checkbook out. Will yeah. they be right or wrong? Time will tell. Yeah. But it, there's, there tends to be, ex that there tends to be two things and from what I've heard and, spoken to people about is the shift is i need to increase my or ensure that my cash flow is there and i need to have a business yep. to go back to which is absolutely the right mentality because yeah, um you know you cash don't is, there's no she's king always has been but cash is, is 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 king more so than ever but then it's but then it, it, it's a balancing act as, as you've rightly said it's a balancing act isn't it if you completely cut costs and have cash flow that's great but when you get back to the business You've got all this money, you can buy all this stock, but you've been invisible for two, three months. Not invisible, but you know, you, you've you've not put yourself out there as 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 much as as potentially as you've said the the five, six, ten dealers that are locally to you. So they're the people that the customers are going to go, you know, and the thought process will be them first, then they might, you know, come to you or whatever. But it's that balancing act of reducing enough money, stop spending enough money to uh to have cash flow but also spending enough money to um be visible to to people now whilst they're whilst they're sat at home on this i i done a little bit of research into it was quite hard to find but into cadbury's during the war um cadbury's weren't I like cadbury's hey eh? i like cadbury's bourneville love cadbury cadbury's love it like dark chocolate if it's not cho if it's not Cadbury's, it's not chocolate. That's that's my motto. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, I can't. I can't do anything other than Cadbury's. Me. Galaxy is king. I like a bit of Galaxy, but with a cup of tea. Anyway. Oh, yeah, it's got got to be Cadbury's. Um, <laughs> during during the war, they weren't, or this, this, before the war, they weren't the market leader. Um, and interestingly, they were the biggest spenders during the war. Even though, obviously, things got rationed. Um, chocolate was obviously a luxury. Um, even though this was all true, um, they didn't stop marketing or advertising um, their their product during during that war. So that when when we come out of the war and rationing eventually stopped, um, and people were able to afford those nice luxuries, they they then become brand leader. Now I'm not saying that that's going to be the case when you know, now I'm, uh, you know, I'm also not comparing this situation to the war, but you know, the principle is the same. If you continue to make yourself visible to people that people will remember you for it. Um, and you will, it's not a, it's not a complete science, but you will hopefully reap the reward of that. But I think this, 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 this is a double edged sword, Paul. You're right. Yeah. You know, I don't disagree with what you've said, 
what I'm saying though is, is that the mindset for me and the advice to our clients is much the same as my own business, you know, cash flow yeah. and I'm still, you know, my, my team still paying them hundred percent and yeah, we you know, still fully operational. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's easy. Of course it's not easy. I can't go to 80% of our clients are dealers and they're yeah. shut. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. What we, do you we, do? We've got plenty to be going on with and we're doing a lot of housekeeping and a lot of design and a lot of, uh, you know, we're quite excited about what we're doing, but still, you know, we're, we're not immune now. Yeah. But, but going back to the bit about the deals that advertise and things like that is, is that I would say it's about the keeping fit in the off season. Okay. You know, is that, yeah, okay, we're not open, etc. but there's, 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 there's business best practice here. Yeah. If you're not looking at your stock online, if you're not taking things off that aren't getting leads as much as others, you know, and refreshing your stock, looking at your pricing, looking at what's getting the most amount of hits, all this kind of stuff, because you're not advertising, you're getting yeah. out of really good habits. Yeah. You know, yeah. and for independent dealers, particularly who are the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker, yeah. you know, my advice to them is do not get out of good habits to save yeah. brand. You know? Yeah. Do not get out of good habits to save a couple of thousand pounds. All right. You know, as harsh as that sounds, yeah, yeah. you better off having a bigger overdraft and staying in good business practice so that you can reap that back again. Yeah. You've got to stay over your stock. I'm sure they are, but you've got to stay over your stock. Don't go blasting it out the door for cash flow. There are better and cheaper alternatives than discounting the hell out of a car just to turn it into liquidity. You know, people talk about liquidity post you know, COVID-19, um, of course it's going to be vital, but just try and take a bit more of a medium term view. The work that we do now with our um, advertising, with our branding, with our social media presence, with the way that we're engaging our teams is what we will uh, reap, you know, in a yeah. couple of months time. Yeah. Showing we do it is it's the only way of looking at it is that you've got to have a medium term view to what you're doing now. Otherwise, you've got nothing tap on. Now maybe it works for you, but yeah. I don't know. It's not it's not something I advise. No, uh, I will. Um, I'm getting a little bit conscious of time now, so I've just got one yeah, one maybe. further question for you. We've we gone over an hour. Uh, I I don't know. Um, <laughs> what um what three things would you advise dealers? to do to prepare to, for reopening? Right, okay. Do you mean, when you say what three things they should be doing now or when they open? Now, or, well, between, yeah, now. Okay, three things. Um, okay, it, it depends on the context of the dealer. So yeah. the first instance that I would say is people. Yeah. Right? Are we making sure that those that if we are furloughed, are fully in the loop you know do are we have we got sight of any you know performance issues have we got sight of motivational issues morale issues capability issues now because yeah. we need to make sure that the team people that are going to be in that business on day one are ready switch you know they're motivated they know what's expected of them they are uh, in the right headspace for it they've got clear actions they know how to conduct themselves, how to behave. They're going to be well managed. They're going to be well supported, you know, because they've been out of the game for a bit. What do they need? What do individuals need to get back to match fitness? So the first thing I'd say is make sure that you don't just expect people to have had two, three, four, five, six, whatever weeks off, and then just come in like nothing ever happened. And yeah. um, so people uh, management, people engagement, people support would be the first one. Second one would be stock. I would say that we need to make sure that we're not making irrational decisions around our stock in the pursuit okay. of cash flow and liquidity. You know, the customers out there are going to be making derisory offers for cars because they think you're on your knees. Um, yeah. There's going to be a, a tidal wave of derisory offers afterwards. If you hold firm, wait for that wave to pass because it will pass. Yeah. But there will be an initial, uh, you know, race to the bottom on price. Yeah. Stay out of that game. If it means coming off a platform to stay out of that game, then come off it. Right. Do not put your stock in the shit pit with everybody else. 
If it's good yeah. stock, it will, st it will still sell. Yeah. It, just might, it might be another month or so before it does, but you're better off hanging on to that car and making six, seven, eight hundred pounds out of it than you are losing 1,500 quid on it. Yeah. Six, yeah. To go back to auction, to buy another one similar with more indemnity fees on it, to lose travel, delivery, yeah. and all the rest of it. Look, try and, if you can, I know it's easy for me to see sat here, but if you can, just try and take a bit more of a sort of medium-ish term view to your stock. Be brave. Be patient, okay? Yeah. So we're, you know, we're working very hard with our clients on those very things because I want to be in good shape. The next six months are going to be crucial, not the next, not the first six days. So yeah. we need to prepare for that. So people, um, stock, uh, most definitely what people need to prepare now. And the third one would be lead generation. Okay. You know, where are you going to get your leads from? What are you doing now to make sure that you, you're going to, there's going to be somebody ringing you up when you open again? Do you know what I mean? Or emailing you or, or whatever. How set up are you to communicate with people online or, or in store? You know, look yeah. at the way, how easy are you to communicate with? How visible are you? What are you doing on social media? How many followers have you got? How many would you like to have? Set those sorts of things go in. So the three things I think if I, if I uh, well certainly we do with our own clients, obviously each client's different, you know, for a 50 car site to a 400 car site, they're doing different things. From a luxury, you know, a luxury um, brand that we'll work with to a volume brand, they'll be doing things slightly differently, not too different, but slightly. But going back to that is absolutely, get your people right, get your stock right, and make sure that you're getting some leads into that business and handling them. Well, those three things are great because obviously I think the way you, the way you approach those three things will be different, but ultimately every dealership's got people, every dealership's got stock and every, every dealership needs, needs inquiries. Absolutely. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's, that's really, really good advice. And, you know, and, and, you know, if there's, if there's, you know, support, um, if they, if anyone wants support or, 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 advice or whatever and you know i'm sure i'm sure i mean you're very active on linkedin um i'm active on linkedin if anybody's got any questions they can obviously they can come to me um my, my assumption is they can come to you i don't want to offer your <laughs> offer your time without asking but we, we've we, we, we've always been very open about what you know and I'm, you know certainly it means a lot to the people work in it but you know essentially it's we're we're normal people yeah and um we're very proud of, of what we do and the fact that we are just who we are. We're not, we're not pretending to be anybody else, which is why we, not for everybody, you know, because if somebody's yeah. being an idiot, we'll just tell them. And I couldn't care less if they don't choose to work with my company because, yeah. the, you know, we've got many clients who do and we love them and they love yeah. us for the way that we approach it. Um, others don't like me because I don't, don't fit their narrative, which is fine. I'm not, no issue with that. But Because you I don't blow know, smoke. I couldn't care less. Um, you know, I shan't dance for anyone, neither will any of my team. Um, so, so with that in mind is that we're also fully aware that, you know, we might be able to help a few. We're doing, you know, doing a few you know, webinar conversations with, which has been great. Thank you for having us on. So, you know, we're very welcome. Bring us. You know, we've got clients who, who call us every day, all day, you know, about things. We're not charging them for that stuff. Yeah. We want to help people because we, I don't know, isn't that the right thing to do? Um, yeah. Because we're people. We're not charging for these services. You know, we, we, we will answer questions. We get lots of direct messages on LinkedIn about certain things or challenges and critiques to any of our content. You know, ask away. We've got, you know, dealer, non-clients non of ours. You know, if, if you want to have a chat about something or, or, you know, you're struggling, don't suffer in silence. You know, you're not, we're here for the industry, if you like, at this difficult time. Yeah. And if we can help, anybody in any way we will yeah and that that's the message that i think you know uh, you know that's that's the message that really needs to be sort of put out there that you know it, dealers are obviously fighting against each other um but at the end of the day you know companies like yourselves us um you know anybody that isn't sorry paul you made it sound as if there were companies that were similar to us which obviously there isn't um, no 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 what i mean by what i mean by that is you're not a dealership <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, so, you know, any, anybody that isn't a dealership, um, but but is still in the automotive industry. There you go. And um, we we helped we helped to well we we're trying to serve and support 
everyone really, and and that's the key. And and you've hit you've hit the nail on the head. Don't suffer in silence. Um, Absolutely. If there's ten, th- for example, if there's ten thousand dealers, okay, just a made up number. Yeah. Out, right, and two thousand of them cease to exist in the next six months. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's market is just contracted. Yes. Right, isn't it? Yeah. Consultancy, training, you know, aggregators, suppliers of mats and flaps, paint protection, auctions, the list goes on, we could be here all day. Right? Yeah. Everybody suffers. Yeah. So are we not best then to all collectively ensure that that doesn't happen if we can? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's and that's the idea behind a lot of the things that are going out um, on social media and, and things like that. And the idea behind this is to offer a bit of an insight. If, if the viewers take just one thing away from, from listening to us talk for probably the best part of an hour, um, then great. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah. if they take a lot more than that, perfect. But if they can take one thing on board and it changes the way they're doing things and for the better and it helps, perfect. If they do it, it doesn't, it changes it not you know for the worst or stop doing it <laughs> you know and go back to what you were doing but um trial and error really certainly at this time time of uh, the situation we find ourselves in absolutely um, ali i really appreciate your time i understand that you've uh, you're still operational and the business is still up and running so i appreciate you you're probably right. flat out thanks for having thanks for having me and uh, yeah enjoyed it cheers good perfect brilliant i'll um yeah i'll uh, i'll speak to you soon thank you very much Thanks, Ali. Cheers.